Pastor Willis. Thank, thank you for having me, and thank you to Westchester Church. You guys are so faithful, and this is definitely a sacrifice getting up so early. It's easy to get up early in the summertime when it's warmer, when it's nicer, but getting up in these cold winter days is definitely a sacrifice. So um, God is definitely going to honor you. Somebody say it like this, that God always meets people at an altar of sacrifice. So I believe God has met with you and will meet with you. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to abuse my time, uh, Pastor Willis. How much time do I have? Till about 530. 530. Okay. 630 your time. Okay. Awesome. Oh, sorry. 630. Yes. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump in here. I'm reading from Genesis chapter two and verse eight, Genesis chapter two and verse eight. Um, if you, you might not have your Bibles, it's early. Uh, Genesis chapter two and verse eight, the Bible says, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. So God plants the garden, and there he puts Adam, whom he had made. And then I'm jumping to verse 15 of the same chapter. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So God plants this garden, and he puts Adam there. And the Bible says the reason why he put him there was to to dress it. And that word dress means to cultivate, to tend to it, to, you know, to be the gardener. And then that other word to keep it, that's not necessarily to maintain it. This wasn't maintenance. This wasn't like cutting the, you know, the grass or, or, or maintaining it, cut, cutting the trims and, and pruning and all that stuff. That word keep there means to guard. Like he was there to tend it, to cultivate it, but he was also there to guard it. Right. So God, God plants a garden for Adam. And this was, you know, sometimes we think of this garden as like Adam's home, but this, the Bible calls it the garden of God. It was God's place, right? God created this place. And then the place that God created, he put this man named Adam. And then Adam's job was to tend it and to cultivate it and also to guard it, to keep it, right? To protect it. It's almost like a watchman. He was there to watch out to see what would come in the garden. And then in verse um, 19 the bible says out of the ground the lord god formed and I, if I, i'm not sure if you guys are doing reading your bible through a year with your bread chart so you probably have all these scriptures read already uh for for 2024 but in verse 19 the bible says out of the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and he brought them unto adam to see what he would call them uh, the Bible says that God is all-knowing. God knew exactly what Adam would call those animals. He didn't bring them to Adam just to see what Adam would call them. God brought these animals to Adam because God gave Adam authority over the work of his hands. And I won't read all the scriptures, but you can find that in Psalm chapter 8. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou hast made given dominion over the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air. So it just wasn't God bringing an animal to Adam and God is scratching his head and say, I don't know to what, what I should call this. This is going to be, you know, a lion or a zebra or a orangutan. That, that was not what happened here. I know sometimes we read it casually and we just think that, but God brought these animals to Adam to show them that he had dominion over them, right? Because whatever you name, that means you have a dim dominion over it. So when you got the Holy Ghost and when you got baptized in Jesus name, he puts his name on you, right? That means God has, that's why when we pray, we pray in Jesus name, because the spirit world recognizes dominion. That's why the Bible says we wrestle not against principalities or power, but against rulers of darkness in, in high places, right? Because it recognizes dominion. And that's why we, that's why when you're baptized, you must be baptized in Jesus name, because that name has a authority. It has dominion. So when God brought these animals to Adam to name them. It just wasn't to just give them a physical name. It was to show rulership. It's to show dominion, right? And this this is very, very, very important. And don't worry, I'm not walking through the whole book of Genesis, but I'm trying to uh, create a foundation for where I'm headed next, right? So God had, Adam had authority over the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, because God gave him authority, Right? When you put your name on it, just like when you sign your lease or you sign your mortgage, you have dominion in that house because your name is on that lease or your name is on that mortgage. That means it's your place. You rule it. You own it. Right. But now 
let's jump to the to the meat of my discussion here with you today. Um, Genesis chapter three and verse one. The Bible says, "Now God planted the garden and put mankind in the garden, and He had dominion over everything um, in the in the garden and also in the field." But look at Genesis chapter three and verse one. If you have your Bibles, if you're awake, uh, if you can look at that verse with me, the Bible says, "Now the serpent was more subtle." than any beast of the field what the Lord God had made. And God said unto the woman, and sorry, and, and he said unto the woman, or the serpent said unto the woman, yea, had God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now you might, as, might have missed it. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. That serpent had no jurisdiction in the garden. He should have been in the field. But God placed Adam there to guard the garden. And somehow, Adam allowed that serpent to get through the doors of the garden. Right? He had no business in the garden. Because the, the Garden of Eden was just, it wasn't all of Eden. Right? Eden was bigger than the garden. But that garden was a sacred place where there was a tree of life. There was food for eat, the Bible says. And there was also food that was pleasant, our tree that was pleasant to the sight. Somehow, Adam allowed the beast of the field to get in the garden. And that's my topic, and that's my heart to you today. We've got to guard our garden. I'll say it again one more time. We've got to guard our garden. God has given us dominion and have given us power. And we can't allow the serpent of the field to come in our garden to contaminate it and be deceptive. Because he mm -hmm. comes in the garden... And he questions what God had said already. And that's my, and then, and that's what I want to encourage you today that you've got to, and uh, um, uh, especially, especially if we have any husbands on here, right? God told Adam that I'm going to put you in a garden and God created Adam and Eve. It was Adam's job to, to, to ward off these deceptive ladies and gentlemen, the enemy's never going to come like the devil, not going to come with a red suit with a pitchfork. He always come deceptively. That's why the Bible says he was more subtle right? He comes through the back doors. That's why the Bible calls him a trespasser. He had no right to be in that garden, right? And it was Adam's job to say, you are not welcome here. Um, let, me, let me read this verse to you real quick. I'm, I'm going to Revelation. I got Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. The Bible says, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against the angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place any more found in the heaven. And in verse 9, the Bible says, and the great dragon was cast out, the, that old serpent. So there's that serpent again from Genesis chapter 3, call the devil that is Satan, which deceiveth the whole world and cast down to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. So there's an insurrection in heaven. And the Bible says that he get cast down to the earth right? That serpent, that devil. And then quickly over to Luke chapter 10, I believe. Luke chapter 10 in verse 7, in verse 18. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, and I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpion. And I've given you all power over the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says that the serpent is kicked out of heaven and he falls to earth. And God tells his disciple here in Luke chapter 10, listen, God would not put up with a, a disobedient insurrection in heaven. So God kicked him out of heaven, but now he's fall to earth. And God says, guess what? I've given you dominion over this earth, just like Adam had dominion over this earth. And you can put your foot upon the serpent or that scorpion and you because you have dominion over him. So I'm, in, I'm encouraging you tonight, or, or sorry, this morning, that you have dominion over this subtle serpent that tries to get into your garden you can't let him get into the garden of your mind and, and so discord or so anxiety or stress or or, or or let you lose peace and lose sleep and sleep because god says i've given you dominion right so what what's happening here god says i won't i won't put up with that insurrection in heaven i'm gonna throw him he, i'm gonna cast him out of heaven and it's time for you adam to finish the job but adam did not finish the job he allowed the serpent that subtle spirit, because remember, Adam had authority over the cattle. He had, uh, because the serpent Bible called it a cattle before it was cursed, right? Adam had authority. So all Adam had to do was say, You're, you, listen, I rule over you. You are not welcome here. 
you have no jurisdiction in this garden. You should be in the field, right? So, so you're you're in different pockets in Westchester. Listen, God is you're not living in that house that you have by coincidence or by accidents. God's given you jurisdiction over that place. So you can't let because whatever this is the enemy. He wants to get into your home so he can get into your heart. I'll say it again. He wants to get into your home so he can get into your heart. Because that, that's how he works. Subtle, right? So sometimes we allow stuff in our home, but it's not intended to get in your home. It's intended to get in your heart. You know, sometimes we'll, you know, some of the stuff that you might partake in or watch, you know, and it might seem subtle at a little bit and it might seem like, oh, this is just insignificant. It's not so bad. But after a while, you start, the Bible says, blesses the man that uh, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. And you see the the the, the, the gradual pro progress. He's 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 standing, he's walking, and now he's sitting. And sometimes that's us, like the stuff that we once deemed scornful. Now we're we're, we're sitting into it, right? So so that's the that's the, that's how the devil comes, and he comes in subtle. So now, like he's setting up camp into the garden of your heart, because whatever comes into your home is intended in to come into your heart, right? So he comes into garden. And 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 I implore you, husbands, um, and if you live by yourself and you, you're a single family, it's your job to guard the garden because God put Adam there to tend it and to guard it. It was Adam's job to see what was come through the doors of those garden. And it was also meeting place for him and God because the Bible said that God would come down in the cool of the day. So God, listen, your heart can have two entrances for God and something else. Right. You can't have divided allegiance. You can't have duplicity. There's only one channel and God needs to be the one that God, God, God should be able to come into the garden of your heart and say, all right, I like this. I don't like that. Get rid of that. You can keep that, you know. Right. But we can't allow because see, the thing is, if we don't if we don't tend the garden or if we don't we don't we don't we don't guard the garden the enemy will feel comfortable coming in. And that's when he sets up camp. You know, it's like snakes. They find the, their their habitat. And sometimes in our heart, if we have things in our heart, jealousy, envy, pride, that's where he works best because he's found a room in the garden of your heart. And that's why God sometimes want to, God can't come in because the enemy's like, he, he's, he's moved in already, right? And, but sometimes I pray God walk, walk in the areas of my heart that's hidden. You know, sometimes there's some areas in our hearts that we don't want to go there. Sometimes it might be hurt from 10 years ago that you don't want anybody to know, but God wants to get in those secret areas of your heart because you, if you don't expose it to God, he can't heal it. Now, if you hide it away and tuck it away and he can't get there, then you will live with bitterness for, for, for years to come. But God wants to get in the garden of our hearts to, to purify it. And I think that's what January is all about, to get in a reset that God, hey, you have, you have, you have access, right? Because the Bible says he, he has to be Lord, right? The Bible says the Lord God, God has to be Lord. When Thomas saw the resurrected Christ, he says, my, my, see, for three and a half years, Jesus was just God to Thomas. But after he saw the resurrected Christ, he said, my Lord and my God, we've got to, we've got to let him become Lord of our hearts. That means he has access. He has a key to every single locked door of my heart. He can enter in because he is Lord, right? He is the landlord of my heart. He is Lord. Amen. So, um, so he said to, so in Genesis chapter three and verse one, again, he comes in and he, he, he deceives um, Eve. And notice in Genesis chapter three and verse nine, after they sin, the Bible says, and the Lord God called unto Adam. And I've read this so many times, you know, Genesis, you go through your Bible, you read it so many times. Notice the Lord God did not call Adam and Eve. He called Adam. Why? Because Adam was the one that God says, you have ownership over this garden. Husbands, listen, we have weak families because we have weak fathers and weak husbands. Husbands, and I'm not, I'm not trying to make this some, you know, marriage counseling session, but it's your job, not just to provide for your family, but it's your job to guard the garden. I'll say it one more time. It's not your job just to give them financial and, 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 and means and make sure the refrigerator is filled but it's your job to guard the garden of your home, right? Because you can't let that serpent, you can't let that serpent come in. And the thing is, it, it's, 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 
he he comes to to Eve and 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 he says he says he says to Eve, okay, hath God said, and and here's 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 the here's how you know it's the serpent. He wants you to get he wants you to trade the eternal for the temporal. Because the Bible says that when she saw that the food was the tree was good for food, he always wants you to make that lopsided trade. It's not fair. He wants you to trade the eternal for the temporal. It's the same thing that he did to Jesus. Turn these stones into bread. Appease your flesh. Make your flesh feel good so you can trade that eternal glory. And the Bible says that he take up Jesus into a high place and show him the kingdoms of this world. Listen, there is nothing in exchange for your soul. There is no trade that you can trade that will value your soul. That's why Jesus says, what shall a man gain? Shall he gain his whole world and lose his soul? You can't, you don't have, you cannot trade your eternal soul for some temporal pleasure or from some temporal means. And that's always the, the, the subtleness of the enemy that he shows you the kingdom of this world. He shows you all the stuff that you can have in this life, but everything in this life has a lifespan. That's why you can't be attached to the things of this world because eventually they will end. But you've got to be a Christ to Jesus Christ because the Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be attached to something that has eternal value. That's why you've got to lay up your treasures in heaven because guess what? There's not going to be anything that, there's not going to be any 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 crisis. There's, there's not going to be any black market. <laughs> there's not going to be any recession that touches your account in heaven. You've, that's where you got to lay up your treasures. And that's why these 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 morning zooms and prayers, because you know what you're doing on these morning zooms? You're adding something else to the account that you have in heaven. You know what you do when you pray? You're adding to that account. You know what you do when you fast? You're adding to the account. And God is a great accountant. He keeps great books. You're never going to go before God and God's like, all right, I forgot what you did in January 2024. And that's what these prayer meetings about. And yes, it's hard. You're getting up early and you're praying and you're some morning you're like, man, I'm going to skip today. I don't want to go to prayer today. But then you have the must, you muster the, the courage and the energy to get up and to roll out of bed when it's 10 degrees outside. What you're doing, you're laying up, you're laying up that spiritual bank account, right? And I'm sure every morning there's something to keep you in bed, right? There's a sickness or, or, or there's a, there's a, there's a, you have a, you, you know, if, from something you ate last night, you don't want to roll over and you don't want to get out of bed, right? But the job of the enemy is to get you to trade the eternal for the temporal. But when you guard your garden, this is my, this is my key point. We've got to guard the garden of our heart because what's intended, it, it's intended to come. Listen, it came through, it came through, that's the, is this is where Adam and Eve live, there's their home but it just didn't come through their home. It entered into their hearts because what comes to your, your home is intended to come to your heart and you've got to guard your heart. I was a quizzer um, in Mount Vernon and this was my favorite verse as a quizzer. It's, it's Proverbs chapter four and verse 23. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. And that word keep again, that means guard, not just maintenance. You can't just maintain but you've got to be vigilant. You've got to guard. You've got to be militant. Amen. Amen. To guard your heart. To don't let anything come into it. Don't let bitterness get into your heart. Don't let jealousy get in your heart. Don't let envy get in your heart. Don't let pride get into your heart. Because it will get into your heart and it will ruin your walk with God. So guard your garden. And that's what the Holy, the Holy Ghost is that filter. I'm not sure if you guys have, we, I, I, I drink bottled water, but if you had a filter or, or you have Brita, like you, 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 you put the water in through the filter and the filter would take out all the goo and the, all the stuff that shouldn't be in your, in your water. That's what the Holy Ghost is. It filters. That's what it should do. It should filter out what can come in your heart and what should go out your heart. So the Holy Ghost, it's that check it. Listen, Pastor Willis is not going to be with you 24 seven, but you have the Holy Ghost that's with you 24 seven. And what it does, it filters what should be in your heart and what should not be in your heart. And sometimes we got to clean the filter and say, all right, let's rinse this out because the stuff that's getting in the water, it's a little, it's a little murky. It's a little muddy. It's a little dusty. I can't drink this stuff because it's not good 
for me, right? That's what the Holy Ghost does. It's like a check. It checks what can come in and what should go out. So anytime there's that pride that's trying to rise up or anytime there's that thing in your heart and, it, you know, it created me a clean heart, the Bible says, right? Because we've got, we've got to guard our garden. We've got to be militant because before you see, if you keep it unkept and unmaintained before, you know, like you got rodents, you got creatures and you got the subtle sly devil that comes sneaky the bible calls it the deceitfulness of sin right it deceives you and it's always subtle it's always incremental you know it's always gradual it says all right you can you can you know because you start letting the serpent in you're like okay it's just a serpent it's just this one and adam you know who's he probably thought it's just this one cattle what what harm is he going to do right but because of that serpent in the garden, mankind is introduced to this thing called death because that was never intended to be a part of our experience, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging Westchester Church this year to guard your garden. That's what prayer does. That's what fasting does. It, it, it regulates your heart and it guards the garden because you can't allow the serpent in. You can't let um, subtle stuff in. And like I said, he always comes subtly, he always comes deceptively he always comes and he never i mean if the devil came as we we the bible said he appears as an angel of light you know he doesn't come as this dark spirit he doesn't come as this this great dark being that we all see or when we used to watch cartoons with the pitchfork and the devil's appearing on the left shoulder he never comes like that it's always subtle but if you guard your garden you have jurisdiction over it listen ladies and gentlemen you have jurisdiction that's why you got to walk in authority You've got to walk in in, 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 in in this militant spirit that God, you've given me authority, just like he said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. He says, I've cast it there and, and you have power to tread up on scorpion and on, on serpent, right? You have that authority because you know why you have the authority? Because you are called by my name. They don't recognize my name. They, they, they're not germane. But, but when I say in Jesus name, the, the spirit world recognizes the authority that we have. So um, I don't want to go over my time. I have um, three more minutes in. Um, let me share this with you uh, before. Um, I, I think I quoted it already. Psalms 1, first, the first book of Psalm. Blessed is man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight shall be in the law of the Lord, and in it that he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither whatsoever he do shall prosper. Because when you guard your garden, you're going to be like that man that is planted by the tree of rivers of water. You bring forth fruit in your season. And sometimes God comes in the garden and he prunes this and he takes that away because he wants the tree. Jesus says, I am the true vine. Missing the first gardener was the Lord God in, in Genesis chapter two and verse uh, eight, right? So when you when you guard your garden, your, your trees are are are, are, are going to bring forth fruit in this season, and the leaves shall not wither. That means we, even when it's winter outside, this is called an evergreen. You're not your 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 trees are your leaves are not going to become brown. They're not going to fall to the ground because you're an evergreen because you have the, that water, and that water in the Bible is always spiritual life. That's why Jesus said to the woman of the well, the water that I shall give you, you shall never thirst again. Why? Because you've kept your garden, and you've watched your garden, and you've, you've, you've guarded your garden. Um, amen. I don't know. Did we pray at the end, Pastor Willis. I'll, I'll turn it back over to you. You are more than welcome to pray if you'd like, Jermaine. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this wonderful church you, that you placed as a light in the city yes. of, of White Plains, God. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you thank would you, touch Jesus. their hearts as they're getting yes. up this morning to pray. We yes. I pray, God, God your pray favor on them. I pray your blessing to guard on them, our hearts. I pray in Jesus' name God, that your anointing you would you flow. Done, I pray, God, that Touch in the heart hearts, of their heart, in their minds, home, that it will be pure, that it will be clean. Lord, I pray that we will be able to guard our hearts. I pray in Jesus' name the issues of life. You realize the authority God, they have. Thank you so God, much for the word that you have allowed to be spoken that into our lives. Of their hearts. Thank you I for the word you've given to me to preach to us this morning. In the name of God, the Lord we Jesus need Christ. what you have for us, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name, I pray your blessing. Uh, thank them. you. Let your face shine upon them, I pray. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Jermaine, thank you so much for sharing that word uh, with us this morning. I just feel like it would be appropriate, everyone, for to allow this word to marinate in our hearts for a little bit. Let's take the next couple of moments and let's pray that God will give us the wisdom and the strength to be able to guard our hearts, to be able to guard the gardens of our lives. Uh, let's let let's let's think and and consider everything that we that could that wants to enter into our lives today and pray that God will give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding on every situation and be able to guard it so we can guard that eternal thing within us. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray that the spirit of wisdom will be upon your people, the spirit of counsel and might. Uh, God, I pray that the spirit, the fear of the Lord will be upon us, oh God. Let us have a fear of you, God. Let us understand what the spirit is saying. Uh, Lord, I ask right now that you will give wisdom to every individual on this call. Your word declares that if we ask wisdom from you, that you will give it to us liberally. So God, I pray that wisdom from heaven will enter into the hearts and into the minds of every individual. Allow them to know what issues of life to say yes to and allow them to know what to say no to. I pray that you will cover us with integrity and character where we will be able to do things that please you. Let us love what you love and allow us to hate what you hate. Allow us to understand what is of you and things that are deceptive and things uh, that are not of you. I ask that you will show us, God, that we may, we may know and we may act and we may perceive the things that you desire. Garden, God, garden, let us be able to see others the way you see them. Allow us to be able to act the way you desire. Allow us to feel the way you feel. God, I pray that our emotions will be your emotions, that our love will be your love, that our joy will be your joy. God, thank you so much. We want to follow you this day. Your word tells us to follow you, Jesus. Uh, So we follow you. Let this mind be in us that's also in Christ Jesus. Uh, Let our eyes uh, be sensitive and allow our eyes to be able to see situations the way you desire us to see them. God, I pray for our hearts, uh, for out of our hearts are every issue of life. Uh, From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, God, let let this heart... uh, that's in me uh, be the heart God. of Christ. That reaches the people. In Lord, I, th- I pray a I covering pray over our hearts. Our harvest, I pray that our that hearts will harvest, be pleasing God. in your sight, God. God. In the Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable Jesus. in thy sight, O Lord, my strength Jesus. and my redeemer. God, Jesus. I pray Jesus. that you will touch our hearts Jesus. and our mouth Jesus. will sing forth Jesus. your Jesus. praise. Jesus. God, I pray for our hands today. Allow our hands to be used in your kingdom. Allow our hands to be used to reach and to love and to care. God, I pray for our feet. Allow our feet to walk in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. I pray for the body this day. I pray for the body of Christ this day. And I ask that your spirit will move and flow upon your body and will lead us and guide us into the way everlasting. Uh, Let us make an impact. Let us make a difference in the lives of others this day. And we will give you all glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Jermaine, thank you so very much for sharing your heart with us. Thank you for share, breaking bread with us this morning. Uh, that was such a wonderful word. If anybody would like to rewatch it, it will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel a little bit later. And so thank you all very much. Remember, today is Wednesday. So there is Wednesday night Bible study tonight. So make sure you can tune in for that. Be on the lookout for the link for that. There's We are... 
we are wanting to flood our hearts and our minds with prayer and with the word. And so just come ready to receive whatever the Lord has for us tonight. So God bless you, everyone. Walk in victory. And let's just um, let's walk with Jesus today and be world changers. God bless you, everybody. Thank you.